In this lesson, we will cover provision for doubtful debts. Now, the specific objectives for this lesson is to explain the meaning of the term provision for doubtful debts, explain the need to provide for doubtful debts, explain how the provision for doubtful debts is estimated, and prepare the entries for increasing and decreasing the provision for doubtful debts. Let's check out the following story. We have a business owner. Now, this business owner has customers and these customers, they pay in cash. So whenever these customers want a product, they will give the business owner their cash in exchange for the product. These are cash customers. And the business owner says, I like cash because I get my money now. But this business owner has another type of customer. These customers buy now and pay later. That means that they don't pay with cash. They buy on credit. And the business owner says, I don't like credit because I have to wait for my money. So 10 days goes by, 20 days goes by, 30 days goes by, and then after 30 days, the credit customers start paying their account. And these credit customers, if you can remember, are referred to as debtors. Now, sometimes the debtors may also have incurred interest due to late payment and therefore they also need to pay for the interest. Sometimes even a debtor cannot pay their account. As this one debtor says, I cannot pay. Also, another debtor may say, I can only pay half of what I owe. And so the business owner says, oh no! Now I will have to write off your account and reduce the other account. So now the business owner does that, but still more customers come to buy goods on credit, meaning that they buy now to pay later, which is not the same as cash. But now the business owner has a thought and he thinks, I am having some doubts. Will all my debtors pay me back in full? Because he learned that some of his debtors won't be able to pay and others may only pay a portion of the amount that they owe. So now he says, some of my debtors won't pay me back or a portion of what they owe I won't get. So that means that only a portion of the amount that the debtors owe the business owner will receive and the rest you'll have to write off. So knowing this, now the business owner says, now that I know this, I can provide for doubtful debts. Now there are reasons why debtors can't pay their accounts and they are economic conditions such as a recession, bankruptcy or the debtor has passed away. Now let's have a look at the difference between provision for doubtful debts and bad debts. Now bad debts is something that can be proven or is something that is confirmed. It means that it's a certainty. So the money that the debtors should pay us back, we will not receive it and therefore we will write off a debtor as bad. While provision for doubtful debts is an estimate. So the owner will estimate what portion of the total outstanding debtors won't pay him back and that usually is a percentage. Now if we have a look at an example of bad debt, 
a debtor owing 500 Nubian dollars became bankrupt. Well, this is a certainty, it's proven, it's confirmed, and therefore we will write off the account as bad. An example of provision for doubtful debts is the owner is doubting if he will receive all his money from his debtors. He provides for doubtful debts with 5%. Now this is an estimate. It's not a certainty. The owner can't guarantee that this will happen. But the owner will have to think about it and therefore come up with this estimate. So the result is 5% of total debtors will not pay back. Now, why would we provide for doubtful debts? Well, in order to match the revenue for one period to the expenses of the same period. And this is the matching principle. The revenue we're talking about is the credit sales from the debtor and the expense will be the increase in provision for doubtful debts. Another reason is to ensure that all profits and assets are not overstated and anticipated losses are considered and this forms part of your prudence principle. So if we do not provide for doubtful debts, we will be overstating our assets, which is in conflict with our prudence principle. Let's have a look at how we would calculate our provision for doubtful debts. This is the formula, our remaining debtors multiplied by a number over a hundred and this number is usually expressed as a percentage. So say for instance our remaining debtors is 10,000 Namibian dollars, our provision for doubtful debts is set at 5%, so we will say 10,000 multiplied by 5 over a hundred, this will give us a provision for doubtful debts of 500 Namibian dollars. Let's have a look at how this would look like if we were to post this in the ledger. Well, we have an opening balance of 400 on the credit side and provision for doubtful debts is a negative asset which means it decreases the value of our existing asset. And our existing asset is the debtors account since the answer we got was 500 and it's more than our balance that means that our provision for doubtful debts has increased from 400 Nobian dollars to 500 Nobian dollars and to account for that we'll have to enter a hundred Nubian dollars on our credit side of our provision for doubtful debts account. So we will enter at the end of the year a hundred Nubian dollars so that our total for provision for doubtful debts will be equal to 500 Nubian dollars. The description in our details we will put profit and loss and then we will debit our profit and loss account with the same amount of 100 Namibian dollars. Let's have a look at another example. So our formula remains the same but this time our remaining debt is 6,000 Namibian dollars. We still provide for 5%. And if we use the same formula, we will come to 300 Nubian dollars. Let's have a look at how this will look like in our ledger. Our opening balance will still be 400 Nubian dollars on the credit side. And now we need to deduct 400 from 300 because 300 is the answer we got when we multiplied 6,000 with a 5%. But now as we can see here, our total for provision for doubtful debts has reduced 
from 400 to 300 so that means we need to reduce our provision for doubtful debts and since it decreases on the debit side we will have to enter the hundred dollars on the debit side and then to complete our double entry we will credit our profit and loss account with the same amount let's have a look at a detailed example 